Welcome to Lesson 23, Finger Power. <laughs> First, I'm going to have a sip of coffee here. It's mid-afternoon here in beautiful Asheville. This is actually decaf, of course. And in case you're trying to read the cup, I don't know if you can see that, but it says, Friends are the marshmallows in the hot chocolate of life. <laughs> I'd like to think I have a few friends out there that are teaching their children keyboard and music theory as we go through the Music basic series. We're up to Lesson 23, as I mentioned. That means we're getting close to the end. There's going to be 25 lessons in this series altogether, so we got two more to go. But let's go on to finger power. You may not realize this, but playing the keyboard, or playing the piano in my case, I know this isn't a piano, it's a keyboard, but it's an athletic activity. You're using muscles that perhaps you're using in a way that you've never used them before. Now, a lot of people think that what you've got to do is strengthen your finger muscles. But here's an interesting thing about fingers. They haven't got any muscles. <laughs> They're basically controlled by muscles in your palm and also muscles in your forearm. So if you take a look at your own forearm and you wiggle your fingers, you'll notice that your forearm is kind of undulating. It's just moving there. So maybe you can see that in the camera. And then you'll also notice you have tendons here in the back of your hand that are connected to the muscles in your forearm and the muscles in your palms. And that's what's enabling your fingers to move. So what this lesson is going to be about is doing some finger exercises. And you might be thinking, what do I need to do finger exercises for? Well, if you want to become a more proficient keyboard player, then just like an athlete who wants to become more proficient at his or her sport, you've got to train your muscles to be able to do what your brain tells them to do. Now, as a keyboard player, you're using more than just your fingers. This is something that you want to get through into your mind here, is that piano playing involves more than just your fingers. It involves your, your arms, and really, it involves your whole body, the way you sit, your posture, and how you put your fingers on the keyboard and so on. And so it's important that you get that muscle coordination that will enable you to play more smoothly and more accurately. The exercises that I'm going to show you in this video are here to improve your strength, your coordination, your dexterity, your flexibility, and of course, it will make your playing smoother. So when you first start playing keyboard, you're going to notice that your fingers feel incredibly weak. You might be saying to yourself, man, I can't get my fingers to do what my brain is telling me. Don't worry about that. Don't get discouraged. That is completely normal. So it's my opinion that strengthening your fingers, and when I say strengthening your fingers, really, I'm talking about the muscles in your forearm and in your palm, the muscles that control your fingers, making them stronger and getting that coordination down. That's one of the most important things that you can do as a beginning keyboard player. Now, you don't need to spend hours and hours doing this, but just a few minutes a day, and this will definitely take your playing to the next level. And you'll become more comfortable with what you're doing. Everybody starts out with low dexterity in their fingers as they're beginning keyboard. They won't have the dexterity that they would like to have. But the finger exercises that I'm going to show you, and these are exercises that can be done both at the keyboard and also anytime you want away from the keyboard. These will help you gain that dexterity. Now it's going to take a while. It doesn't happen overnight. Just like if you started lifting weights, you're not going to expect to see big muscles within a couple of days. But if you keep at it, if you are consistent with it, then you will see an improvement. And I know this from experience. And I've been playing the piano since 1969. So <laughs> I'm pretty old. However, I still practice finger exercises. So this video is going to be somewhat long. And so what I would encourage you to do is not try to do all of these exercises that I'm going to show you in the next several minutes all at once or all in one go. Take the first exercise, for example, that I'm going to show you. And work on that for a few days or however long you feel like you need to work at it before you get comfortable with it. 
and then you can go to the next one. We'll break this video up into sections so you can jump to certain spots and work with certain exercises. Some of these are going to be done here at the keyboard. Others will be done away from the keyboard. I'm going to show you something right now that will help determine how strong your fingers are. I call this the finger strength test. I actually saw this in a book about piano playing way back when I was first starting. You take your hand and put your thumb in there like that and close your fingers around it. And now you've got this finger sticking up. And what you want to be able to do is to bend this finger. See how I'm bending this finger, but it's not going like this. I'm not doing that. I'm able to bend it and keep this joint loose. If you can do that, that means you've got pretty strong fingers. Most people can only do that. So if you can't do this and you end up doing this, don't despair. It just means your fingers are like every other normal person's fingers. And you're going to start working on exercises that will help you to be able to do that. Because see, I've got the muscles in my forearm here trained that I can just bend it this way. And there's other ways you can test your finger strength, but that's one of the most interesting ways that I've seen. So I'm going to switch camera views now so that you can see my hands. We're going to be doing exercises both at the keyboard and away from the keyboard. And you can concentrate on these one at a time and progress through them as you feel more and more comfortable. First thing we're going to do as we do these finger exercises is number your fingers. Each finger is going to have its own corresponding number. So your thumb is going to be finger number one. This will be number two, your pointer. Your middle finger is number three. Your ring finger is number four. And your pinky is number five. So you've got one, two, three, four, five. So here's our first exercise, and you can see that this is being done away from the keyboard. Right now I'm using my right hand. You can also use your left hand in there. This would be one, two, three, four, five. But we're going to start with the right hand. Place your hand on the tabletop. Your wrist is resting on the surface. Your fingers are nicely curved. You don't want them to be flat like this, but, but curved. Almost like looking like a crab, sort of. And now we're going to reach one finger at a time, starting with finger number one, your thumb, and reaching in an upward motion while keeping your other fingertips touching the tabletop. And you don't allow your knuckles to collapse. So here we go. We're going to raise one, comes back down, two, three, four, five. Okay, follow along. One, two, three, four, five. One more time. One, two, three, four, five. Notice how my other fingers don't move when I lift one of them. Now, once you've mastered that, let's make it a little bit more challenging. Have your teacher, or if you're a teacher listening to this, write down for your student a random series of numbers. Obviously, you must contain it within one through five. So say, for example, you write down one, three, five, two, four. Now your student has to think, or you have to think, one, whoops, see, I, I lifted the wrong one. <laughs> one, three, five, two, four. One, three, five, two, four. Any sequence of numbers that you want to come up with. Five, four, two, three, one, one, five, two, four, three. Now, this is going to be the hardest challenge of all for this particular exercise, and that would be lifting two fingers at once. One, three. Two, four, three, five. Yeah, it's going to take a little thought. Three, five, two, four, two, five, one, five, one, two, two, three. You're going to start feeling it. Not only 
up here in your hand, you're going to feel it here in your forearm. You'll start feeling these muscles getting a bit of a workout. All right, now we're going to move over to the keyboard and I will show you the next exercise. Okay, now that we're back at the keyboard, we're going to do what is called the five finger pattern. So what you're going to do is start by putting your hands, both your hands, we're going to do this both hands together by putting them on the C major chord. So starting here with your little finger, with finger number five of your left hand on C and finger number one of your right hand on C, we're going to play the first five notes of the C major scale going up and then back down. So it'll go like this. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. This is going to help you to coordinate your hands while you're playing. And we can also take a look at how your hands are positioned. You don't want your fingers to be like this. So I can still kind of play that way, but it's actually better if your fingers are curved like this. And you want to make sure that you're producing a solid tone, that every note is at the same volume. That's why it's important that we continue to work on our finger power. Then you can do the next key. I'm going to go up to the next one. And the one after that. And so on until you get all the way back up here. And as your fingers get stronger, you can do it a little bit faster. But don't try to go too fast too soon, otherwise you might get a little bit sloppy. So you always want to make sure that you're in control of your fingers and that the sound is smooth and even. And so that's the five finger pattern. Now later on, you can get to try it in different keys. gets to be a little bit more of a challenge when you add black keys into the equation. Now the next exercise is where we're going to be playing chord sequences. And this is the starting point for playing songs as a soloist or as an accompanist. So we're going to start with your left hand and we're going to play the C major chord. Now the sequence that we're going to be playing is C major F major, G major, and then back to C major. But we're going to do it, instead of doing it like this, we're going to use the chord inversions that we've learned about. So, you'll notice that is much more smooth. Maybe I should say that is more smooth <laughs> than playing it this way going from C major in root position, meaning the root is the bottom note. Then we go to F major in what we call second inversion, which means that the root is here in the middle, because this is F major. And then we go to G major in what is first inversion, because the root is on top. So C major, F major, G major, C major. Now we're going to do it in the right hand. Notice how my hand doesn't have to move that far. When I go from C major to F major in second inversion, my thumb stays right where it is. And then G major in first inversion is not that far away. And then this, this note gets to stay where it is. And we go back to C major. 
And then we do it both hands together. Now, once you've mastered that, then we try it in other keys. Let's try it, for example, starting here. And what's the next chord? It's not going to be this, but it's going to have that flat in it, B flat. We can also do it in the key of G. Now the real challenge is for you to learn to play this little chord sequence in all the major keys. Now this may seem like a lot of work at first, but the reason that we're doing it this way is because I want you to be able to play any song in any key, any song that you want to play. All right, now I've got one more thing to demonstrate for you. Okay, this particular exercise we're going to take both hands and put them back on the keyboard. And what we're going to do now is we're going to press down all five keys, just like that. And now we're going to play one note without moving the other fingers. So let's try with our thumbs. Finger number one. We play one, two, three. Notice, though, the other fingers, fingers are not going flat like this. We want to keep those fingers curved, and we're just playing this note. Now we move to finger number two of both hands. We lift them high. You don't have to worry about playing loud at this point. Just train this finger to move, or these fingers, I should say, to move without moving the other ones. And then here we go to number three. Number four, this one's going to be a little harder. And finally, doing it with your finger number five. So we're going to play each note or each set of notes, and we'll just play it eight times starting with our finger number one. And ready, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 Then we come back down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. It's hard not to sing the note. Seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then finally, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, I realize that that's not very exciting to listen to, but what you're doing is you're giving the muscles in your forearm, the muscles in your palm, those muscles that control your fingers, you're giving them a workout. You're training them to be coordinated. And that's going to make it much easier for you to play any song that you want to play. Now, I got one more thing to show you, and this is actually a uh, exercise device that I use to help train my fingers. All right, I'd like to show you this little exercise gizmo that I have that I've been using for years. This is what it looks like. It's called, let's see if you can see that, Finger Magic. I just call it my finger exerciser, although more accurately it should be called my forearm muscle and palm muscle exerciser that enables me to move my fingers in a more efficient manner. Anyway, that's a pretty long title too. Finger exerciser is what I call it. I've had some fun times going through the airport with this thing, and uh, it shows up in the x-rays. It goes by, and 
the people at the security have to s stop and open my bag and look inside, pull this thing out and go, what is this? And I have to tell them what it is. It's to help me exercise my hands, warm up my fingers if there's not a piano available. So here's how it works. Put it in your hand like this. You can see what I'm doing here. And then you press down a finger, just one. Try to press one finger down while not moving the others as much as possible. So here's finger number two, three, four, you know. Uh, normally I try to do like 25 reps of each finger just to help warm up my hands. And you can see it's a little, little harder to do with that fourth finger. That's always the weak one. And then your little finger. Sometimes it's hard not to move the other ones as well. Now the interesting thing about this particular finger exerciser is it's got these little... Um, I'm not exactly sure what you call them. <laughs> these little wheels that you turn. And if I, for example, take this one and turn it all the way down, now it's much easier. So this one will allow you to adapt to the strength of your hands. Now I have it on the highest setting. Because my hands, after all these years, are, are kind of strong. And not only can you use it to exercise these four fingers, but if you hold it this way, now you can exercise your thumb as well. Or you can hold it like this, and this gives your thumb an even better workout. And now you've got the muscles here in your palm, and you can still see the muscles working in my forearm as I continue to do that. So I'll put a link down below in the video, and if you're interested, I have no affiliation with Finger Magic or any finger exerciser manufacturer. I'm not uh, sponsored by anybody. But I think these things are very useful. I use it all the time, especially when I'm playing a concert and I don't have the opportunity to sneak out on stage and warm up at the piano while everybody's sitting in the audience waiting for the show to start. Can't do that. I also use it at church uh, as we're getting ready to do the worship service. It's early in the morning. My hands are cold and I don't want to be trying to play the keyboard while everybody else is trying to get tuned up and stuff. And so I'll sit there and work with this thing and use it on both hands, obviously. Another way you can use it is to just hold down all of the, the little things. I don't even know what you call them. They're not keys. <laughs> anyway, you hold them all down like this and it's isometric exercise. Now, if you use a thing like this, you've got to be really careful not to overdo it. If your hands are still learning their way around, if you're, if you're still trying to get more strength in your fingers, you don't want to strain yourself using this thing. I've been doing this for many years, so my hands are pretty strong at this point. But when I first started out, I would have something like this at the lowest setting and maybe just do it a few times in order to get my fingers used to this type of workout. It's very intense, much more so than playing the keyboard. But anyway, there's another way that you can exercise your fingers or the muscles that control your fingers and this will in turn help you to become a stronger and smoother keyboard player.